epicenter of tailgating in the fall, the Grove, Oxford, Mississippi. Through Friday night, rain still festive. And now a start to a Saturday where Hugh Freeze's Ole Miss Rebels, led by Laquan Treadwell, could make a big step on their elusive journey to a championship. This Rebels are ready. Tough to beat here under Hugh Freeze. The Arkansas Razorbacks, a blowout win over Ole Miss a year ago in Fayetteville, now rolling into Oxford. Game one of our doubleheader on CBS that will go a long way in determining who wins the SEC West. It's Arkansas versus Ole Miss. A full day and night in the SEC West. The standings presented by Dr. Pepper. The marquee matchup tonight on CBS, LSU at Alabama. Two versus four in the college football playoff ranking. Rebels already have defeated the Tide, Arkansas today. In the East, the Florida Gators with a win over Vanderbilt today have secured their trip to the SEC championship game in Atlanta. With Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell, I'm Carter Blackburn. Well, rightfully so, there's a lot of attention on Alabama and LSU tonight, but the Ole Miss Rebels are going to have a say in who wins the West. Yeah, it's been an up and down season for Ole Miss, the loss of Memphis, the loss of Florida, but the bottom line is they control their own destiny. They are exactly where they want to be entering November. So can Chad Kelly quarterback Ole Miss to the West win? Well, he leads the SEC in passing yards and total offense, but he also has more interceptions than he has touchdowns in the last three games. So consistency and decision making is going to be crucial. Now, we talked to him about his receiver group, which I think is the strength of this team and arguably the best among the country. They're going to want to connect on some big plays downfield, and for that to happen, Kelly He's got to feed those guys the rock. One of us was unanimous All-American offensive lineman, and it wasn't me. So I'm guessing, Aaron, you're all right with the way that Arkansas plays. I am, and I'm glad you remembered the <laughs> word unanimous. Hey, Arkansas makes no bones about what they want to do. They want to come right at you, and I think that that gives them the best chance to win this ballgame. Alex Collins has done a tremendous job of shouldering the load with Jonathan Williams out. That turf toe injury seems to be fine, and I think number three could hold the key to playing defense today by playing keep away. Like any long-time good series, there is a discrepancy between the Arkansas and Ole Miss record books back to 1914. A forfeit. Arkansas claims Ole Miss won. They actually met twice in the Sugar Bowl, including January 1, 1963. From Vaught Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, it's the Rebels and the Razorbacks. Nathan Noble's kickoff. It'll be Jared Cornelius in the end zone. He takes a knee. So we take a look at our Chick-fil-A starting lineups, beginning with the Arkansas Razorbacks quarterback. Brandon Allen, the son of longtime Arkansas assistant coach Bobby Allen. Brandon quarterback, the Fayetteville High School Bulldogs. When Arkansas offered him as a sophomore, he accepted almost immediately. Told us this week he never really considered going anywhere else. Today he starts his 30th consecutive game as the Razor's, Razorbacks quarterback. Brett Bielema's Arkansas Razorbacks, first and 10 from the 25. Fake the toss. Allen pressured. Dumps it complete to Hunter Henry, a big part of the Arkansas offense. Let's take a look at the rest of the Razorback offense. Well, Carter, Arkansas's best chance to win this game today is going to be to control the line of scrimmage. So look for the powerful left guard, Sebastian Tratola, to lead a unit that will try to run the football early and often versus this undersized but speedy Land Shark defense. So we're going to be paying attention to the Arkansas offensive line, is what you're telling me. I think they're going to have a lot to do with whether or not the Razorbacks walk away with a victory today. It's Cody Walker in the backfield behind Brandon Allen. On second and eight, another completion to the outside. Brandon Allen completes it. 
to Drew Morgan for a first down. Let's look at the Ole Miss D. Well, senior safety Trey Elson is a physical box safety that will need to lead an aggressive, much improving secondary that must be a factor in both the pass and run games today. And I think that he's going to lead a group that must tackle well. Elson is a playmaker. They're going to need him to show up. Arkansas comes out throwing early on with Brandon Allen. He's been throwing the football extremely well. That's a good change up to break their normal tendencies. Straight ahead. This is Cody Walker, the junior from Jefferson City, Missouri, with a solid gain. C.J. Johnson makes the tackle. We talk so much about the Arkansas run game, but you like Brandon Allen the way he's played a quarterback. He's done an outstanding job. He's a tough, fierce competitor. He's a leader. The game has really slowed down for him, and when you look at him compared to a year ago, Carter, he's making much better decisions. He's pushing the ball downfield, and a lot of that, Coach Bielema told us, because of the guys around him are stepping their game up as well. His offensive coordinator, Dan Enos, who actually left the head coaching job at Central Michigan for the offensive coordinator job here. On second and three, Walker picks up a first down. Already Arkansas at midfield against the Rebel defense. This offensive line we talked about, Sebastian Tratola. Keep your eye right here, double teaming up to that second level. This is what you want to do as an offensive line is work those backside combination blocks. They are blowing Ole Miss off the ball right there. That is good news if you're an Arkansas fan. The Land Sharks have to play tougher at the point of attack to stop this run game. You're not surprised by that, are you? I I'm not. Watching these guys on film, they're speedy, they're fast, but I just don't see the push and the toughness to disengage at the point of attack that you need. First and 10 from the 33. Give it to Walker, the fullback in the eye for just uh, maybe a yard and a half. Breland speaks on the stop. Look at this Arkansas team. They're one of the better teams in the country, Carter, at preventing lost yardage plays. They typically get three to four yards on first down that creates up some second and mediums and third and mediums. But the Land Sharks on first down have been doing a nice job stopping the run. Let's see what the Razorbacks come back with here on second down. It's Ole Miss defensive coordinator Dave Womack, 36th season in coaching. His first, 1979 with the Arkansas Razorbacks. They were co-champs of the Southwest Conference. Second down, Allen delivers. Touchdown, Arkansas. It's Drew Morgan. Razorbacks through the air into the end zone, and Drew Morgan has the TD grab. 31 yards from Brandon Allen. Well, it looks like there's three high safeties, and the weakness of that is in between the two defensive backs. Drew Morgan just going to be sitting here and run a skinny post on the inside and does it. Nobody goes with him. The football's right there, perfectly thrown, and Morgan showing you his ability to run after the catch for the easy touchdown. Brandon Allen, a perfect six for six through the air to get the day started for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Ole Headland, the red shirt freshman on the PAT. Arkansas builds it around ground and pound on digging it out on the turf, but Allen through the air to Drew Morgan. Arkansas on the board first in Oxford. Six plays, 73 yards, and the big one, Brandon Allen to Drew Morgan, just like you said, Aaron. Brandon Allen can get it done. That is his 50th career passing touchdown for the Razorbacks. Not just about the run game. No, a quarterback is supposed to be the point guard of the offense and distribute the football to the other playmakers, and Brandon Allen has just done a masterful job of that. He was clutch in the fourth quarter in overtime against Auburn, and he's been clutch in this ball game here today. Six for six to start now. See Brandon now, like, like usual, he's behind some big hogs. <laughs> Aside from that one sack, they've done a decent job, but it's been set up on play action. When you can hit big passes like that, that'll open up that defense and create some run lanes. I would expect Arkansas to be able to run the football better now, believe it or not, because of that last touchdown pass. Look more like the Ole Miss secondary in the Memphis game. Not right. good for the Rebels. No, it's not. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> Wayne Salins kickoff taken by Walton Short, and he is popped as he gets to the 23-yard line. Jake Filet starting lineups for the Ole Miss offense. Well, defensively, I think Arkansas 
is going to have their hands full today. And it begins with Chad Kelly. It's been a journey to Oxford, Mississippi. Growing up in Buffalo, nephew with the Hall of Fame quarterback Jim Kelly. Chad came south to play at Clemson. Kicked off the team during the spring game a year and a half ago on the East Mississippi Community College. Won a national title. Now Ole Miss. It has been a drama on and off the field, but Hugh Freeze says he's my guy. Yeah, and I think Laramie Tunsil is going to be able to help that guy either stay upright and the running game seems to have been improved with number 78 in there. Watching him these last two games, Carter, he's the best left tackle in football, and he's going to play a big role in whether or not Ole Miss is able to move the football today. First and 10 complete. Laquan Treadwell has his first grab, takes it to near the 40. That time, Chad Kelly was sitting back there eating sandwiches. Zero pressure that time by Arkansas. And the Razorbacks have to be able to get home. They've had some success. But when you have this much electricity and firepower out on the perimeter, you got to get to the quarterback. Maybe a buffalo chicken sandwich <laughs> like Jenny likes. Jalen Walton gets a couple there. Kelly delivers to the tight end Ingram, who was wrapped up immediately by D.J. Dean, the junior corner. And that's the way you have to be able to tackle if you're Arkansas. They're nice, good, tight coverage by number two Dean. On third and eight, Kelly pressured. He's going to take off and have the first down, and here goes Chad Kelly rolling inside the Arkansas 25. Josh Liddell finally shoves him out. Going to be some pressure with that front four off the left side of that offensive line. Been very porous today. They just run a T.E. stunt, which is an exchange of a responsibilities, a crisscrossing. But once again, the elusiveness of Kelly hits home. First and 10, D.J. Dean is out there at corner for Arkansas. Ingram right there on that side. Kelly going to the side where D.J. Dean's at corner. Evan Ingram such a big target it looked like one of the defenders for Arkansas fell down but you see how quickly this Ole Miss team can strike 21 yard pickup first and goal Kelly Jalen Walton slicing his way for a touchdown go figure Arkansas through the air Ole Miss on the ground is how the Razorbacks and Rebels get in the end zone of the first quarter and they ran to that left side with Laramie Tunsil, who we talked about at the beginning of the game. Just watch them cave down that inside. The backside guard, number 70, Jordan Sims, doing a nice job coming around and providing the seal block. And a nice move by Walton to touch down there. Gary Wonderlich's PAT evens it 7 all. Better than Ole Miss did last year in Fayetteville. We got a tie game. This is game one of our doubleheader in the SEC West. Ole Miss, Arkansas. Jared Cornelius lets it bounce back for a touchback. Brandon Allen on second and ten. Feeling the pressure. Rolling, throwing, complete again. It's Reed who makes the grab as he gets to near midfield once again. Now eight for eight, Brandon Allen. What I've noticed early on in this ball game is both quarterbacks are extending plays with their legs. I thought that Brandon Allen felt a little bit pressure there that he didn't need to bounce, but he buys time. He keeps his eyes downfield. And look at that football beautifully thrown, Carter, right in stride, right on the money for the big first down. He's averaging 254 passing a game. He already has 111 passing yards in this first quarter, Brandon Allen. Third 20 plus yard pass play of the game. One last play in the first quarter. It's Alex Collins tripped up from behind, but that will bring us to the end of the first quarter with the score Arkansas 7, Ole Miss 7. We'll return, return to Oxford after this message and a word from your local station. Do not adjust your television set. Yes, <laughs> Arkansas has 111 passing yards, Ole Miss. Only 56. The Rebels are out rushing the Razorbacks as we get set for the first play of the second quarter. The the odd couple of SEC coach friendship, Brett Bielema and Hugh Freeze. Brett says of Hugh, he's a good Joe. They're, they're buddies. They like one another. You trade Vegas tips more from Brett to Hugh. That th that's what surprised me more than anything was that Bielema was giving Coach Freeze and his wife tips in Vegas. 
And they met Bobby Flay and saw Celine Dion. Worked out pretty good. You know, and, and that's and part of that is that the obvious dichotomy between uh, philosophies offensively, football wise, and yet they both kind of flipped the script here so far today. It was interesting coming into this game. I felt like both offenses and what their strengths were matched up to the weaknesses of the opposing defense. And I wondered if how they counteracted that what effect that that would have on the game and clearly both of these teams are getting off script and taking what the defense is giving them and having some success doing it. Third and six amazingly they haven't converted a third down yet. Allen rolling left comes back completes. That's Jeremy Sprinkle the junior tight end who makes the grab on third down going to the tight end. Sprinkle runs a pivot route here. Just a good job against tight coverage going to run out plan his foot and then come back inside flash his numbers to the quarterback Allen because the pressure slides to his left and once again places the ball perfectly for the pickup you like the way Allen is responding to that Ole Miss pressure he is because he's keeping his eyes downfield and he's not panicking this is the maturity of number 10 that we talked about at the top of the show so Allen play action to the air again Brandon Allen complete inside the 20. Arkansas driving again. Jared Cornelius makes the grab. It's been a really nice job of Brandon Allen today delivering this football out on the perimeter. Can step into his throw and being deadly accurate on those outbreaking routes all afternoon long. Fourth 20 plus yard pass. So first and 10, Arkansas in the red zone. Brought to you by Verizon. 58% touchdown percentage for Arkansas. That's below the national average. Not good enough for the Razorbacks. No, it's ninth in the conference as well. We talked about when you're on the road, you have to score touchdowns here. Field goals won't beat this old Miss Rebel team. Second down. Allen rolling again, throwing end zone, touchdown, Arkansas. Dominique Reed hauls it in, and the Hogs are on top. Breakdown in coverage, Carter. You have to have eye discipline. Here he is on the slot. The corner thinks that Brandon Allen's going to run, and he comes up. He's going to come up and try and fill and run support. Leaving the receiver all alone, you have to be disciplined with your eyes. And once again, we talked about it earlier, this Ole Miss secondary is appearing like the one that got torched against Memphis. Cole Headland, the redshirt freshman kicker, on for the PAT. A 10-play, 59-yard draw. A touchdown pass, second of the day, Allen to Reed. Razorbacks lead in Oxford. Fun to be in November and all these things get determined. Walton brings it back to near the 21 after the short kick. First and 10, Chad Kelly out of the shotgun, handing off to Jalen Walton, who pushes his way to the 29. Arkansas is not tackling very well early on this game, which is why the run game is going. But what I'm surprised, we're not seeing more big plays by the Rebels. They lead the conference in that category, but they've been very conservative here today. Hurry up, give it back to Walton again. Move the chains, first and 10, Ole Miss on the ground. Establishing that run game, but that's where Ole Miss, ironically, can use the run game to their advantage and hit Arkansas with some play action passes if their secondary isn't disciplined with their own eyes. Judd into the game, a tailback. Walton gets a break. Pistol look. Kelly, there's the play action. There's the deep shot hit at the line and incomplete. Just as you predicted, Aaron. Well, when you establish the run, especially on a first down after a first down, and Arkansas running onto the field late, they wanted to affect the quarterback. And one of that ways was to be able to get your hands up in the passing lane. You see the adjustments being made. Arkansas running guys onto the field. That helps slow this Ole Miss offense down. But nice first down play there by the backs. Looks like Keenum got his hand on the football. That's three straight incompletions now for Chad Kelly. Back the quarterback. Kelly time to throw here on second and ten and delivers to one of the many targets he has to throw to. It's Markel Pack, the sophomore 
who was from Michigan. Speaking of Michigan, Dan Werner, fourth year in his second stint at Ole Miss. His dad, George, high school coach. Is it Jawack, Michigan? I'm sure I got that wrong. But <laughs> we're a Michigan football family. I believe it's near My or Niles, Michigan, at the Indiana border. Kelly, deep shot. Grabbed near the 30. It's Markel Pack again. Back-to-back -back receptions for Pack. That's on Kevin Richardson, the backup safety. Well, we just saw him get hit. He gets hit again there. But we talked about those big plays, those deep passes. Well, he hung tough in the pocket and delivered a bullet. After the big completion, hurry up. Kelly dancing in the pocket, still behind the line. So he flings it almost picked. Two hands on the football by Santos Ramirez. Nearly had a big win for the Hawks. I thought the left tackle, Laramie Tunsil, could have got held or called for a holding call there. But that's a couple times we've seen Chad Kelly put the football in harm's way trying to make something happen. One on the deep shot and one there. Remember, turnovers were critical in their loss a year ago. Six turnovers in that loss in Fayetteville in the rain. Kelly on second down, complete. That's Cody Ford, the senior from Auburn, Alabama, who had the 73-yard touchdown in the win over Alabama. Yeah, he averages 18 yards per catch. He's really got some big play abilities, a big wide receiver with outstanding size and speed. We're finally seeing Chad Kelly start to find those guys we talked about right off the top. Yeah, they're finding in the middle of the field. It looks like Arkansas may bring some pressure here. Third and three, here they come. Kelly delivers, complete. Treadwell stiff-arming his way inside the 10. Finally ridden out of bounds by Jared Collins. That's what Laquan Treadwell's so good at. He's so big and so physical. With pressure right in his face, Chad Kelly sitting in the pocket. But watch the stiff arm. You mentioned it. Laquan Treadwell's like a tight end out there almost with some speed. He's just such a physical, pro a prominent figure out there that it makes it hard for guys to tackle him. Kelly's going to pull it, take it inside the five, dive for the goal line. Loose football, touchdown the signal. Kelly crossed the goal line, touchdown Ole Miss. The football comes out, but the signal is touchdown for Chad Kelly and the Rebels. Chad Kelly all afternoon long has been making plays with his legs. The end just comes down. There's nobody out there in support or contain, and he gets north and south and crosses the goal line with the ball in possession for the touchdown. Chad Kelly is making things happen today on the ground. He's done a really, really nice job. It is definitely good Chad Kelly that's shown up this afternoon. Gary Wonderlick's PAT ties it at 14. Kelly takes it himself, the junior from Buffalo, New York. With some help from his friends to get downfield, Kelly into the end zone, even at 14 in Oxford. Florida has won the East. They're on to the SEC championship game. Ole Miss, there have been 23 SEC championship games. Ole Miss, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, and SEC newcomer, Texas A&M. They've never been there, but Hugh Freeze now, we asked, you asked him a great question. All right, you wake up the day after the SEC championship and you've won it. What has happened? He said, why did the noise? We focused on us, we shut everything else out, and we stayed focused. Imagine the celebration. If, oh, if these boy. Rebel fans, I mean, they haven't won an SEC title since 63. They've never made the trip to Atlanta for the SEC championship. It would be earth shaking in Oxford, <laughs> Mississippi. And, and it really would be the next step in the evolution of this program. Mm -hmm. Noble's kickoff. Be taken by Cornelius last second. <laughs> he decides to take a knee. So Arkansas will have it at the 25. Jackson, the fullback in there, play action. Allen's going to dump it, complete to Hunter Henry. The junior from Little Rock goes rolling with some help to near midfield again. Off the play action, Arkansas hits Ole Miss. 
Carter, this is kind of Superman bizarre. This is the exact opposite of what we expected coming into this game. It's been Arkansas that is hitting big pass plays down the field. They're fifth of the game. Hunter Henry, such a good weapon. But you see the Land Sharks are loading that box. And because of that, they're threatened by Arkansas's run. And what that's doing is it's opening up the pass game. Walker in a tailback. Cody Walker stood up at the line of scrimmage and pushed back. C.J. Johnson leads the way. Second and nine. Fake it twice in the backfield. Allen to the air, to the end zone. Incomplete intended for Jeremy Sprinkle. Contact, no flags. Denzel Kimdichi in coverage. It almost looked like Jeremy Sprinkle kind of gave up on that route. There was a little bit of pump fake that time by Brandon Allen. The ball ended up further along his route progression than Sprinkle did. Sprinkle thought he was held, but no flag. Allen had completed six straight. Would have been his third TD pass, but now it's third and nine. Been really impressed with the front four of Ole Miss. Got Robert Kimdichie on the hash up here. Playing the defensive end position. Let's see if he can get home. Kimdichie backing off into coverage now, and Allen just throws it incomplete, setting up the screen on third and nine. And keep in mind for Arkansas, even on fourth and nine now, they've struggled in the kicking game. Only one attempted field goal in the last three weeks. Freshman kicker Headland as long as 27, so he's out here for what would be the longest kick of his Arkansas career. It's been feast or famine for this offense. Big plays, but they've been getting these third and longs. And I'm telling you, this front four, this 4 2 5 defense for the Land Sharks, been playing lights out. This is Cole Headland out of the timeout. 45 yard field goal attempt for the lead. Longest he has kicked is 27, longest he has attempted is 41. It's going to be pretty good field position for Ole Miss if he misses. Headland's 45 yarder spins in good all the way. So mark it down as a new career long for the freshman from Argyle, Texas. Good from 45. So it is Arkansas by three, nearing halftime. Well, the Razorback fans are happy because they have a field goal lead, but also because this may be what Arkansas wanted to do on the road against Ole Miss. This is the exact type of game that they wanted Carter to play small ball to control the football. They've dominated time of possession now. I'm sure that they plan to do it by running the football but by any means necessary when you're on the road in the SEC. Lane Sailing's kickoff will be a touchback nine seconds away. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Ginny Dell. Game one of our doubleheader in the SEC West. You see the target line for Wonderlick right around the 30. Nine seconds, one timeout left for Ole Miss. Kelly over the middle, complete. Treadwell nearing that 30-yard line inside. Can he get down or out of bounds? Shoved out. One second showing. Tolliver pushes him out. Exactly one second, one chance for Wonderlick. Well, you want to keep the receiver inside and in front. And unfortunately, they let Lacan Treadwell catch that football, and he was very close to running out of time. But that little burst of speed at the end, that's the only positive result that could have happened on that play with only nine seconds left was for him to get out of bounds so that they could get this play dialed up and get the field goal kicked. Good execution that time by Ole Miss, but they got a little lucky too. Elima does have one timeout. Wonderlick gets off the 37 yarder and we are even at the half tied 17 a very quick field goal drive executed so close to perfection one second up there for Laquan Treadwell as he steps out of bounds so Gary Wonderlick evens the score 17 all between Arkansas and Ole Miss. Jenny Dell is with Ole Miss head coach Hugh Freeze. Coach, you've been great in the trenches, being able to stop the run, but how do you address the secondary in the second half? Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's frustrating right now, man. We uh, 
I think we've got a really good offensive plan. We're just not getting any possessions. And uh, we're not getting off the field on third down defense. I've given up way too many explosive pass plays. We've got to get in there and settle our secondary down and, and, and get a different plan. That was a great momentum shift right there. How do you carry on the momentum? Well, we get the ball first. That's big. And we've got to flip the field. Every possession we got that half was inside the 20. So uh, it'll be good for us to get the ball here. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. That is the end of the first half with a score 17-all between Arkansas and Ole Miss. Treadwell makes the grab, makes the sprint, and most importantly gets out of bounds. Wonderlich ties it. Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, Brian Jones be along with the Geico Halftime Report after this word from your local station. 17-all game one of our doubleheader in the SEC West. Arkansas and Ole Miss even. A moment ago, Jenny Dell spoke with Arkansas head coach Brett Bielema. Coach, it seemed like in the first half the passing game made up for the running game. Was that unexpected or was that part of the game plan? Well, we knew that they were going to defend and run. We had to hit some passes, some play action. We did that. Uh, we got to be opportunistic, especially down here in the red zone. Uh, I like the way our defense playing. The quarterback's going to he's going to give us one. We just got to make it happen when, it, when it's there. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. So that was Coach Bielema on the first half. Aaron Taylor, what do you expect in the second half? Probably more of the same. I would expect Arkansas to try and run the football, but you heard Bielema say that Chad Kelly's going to give him one. There was a couple passes early on that ball game that Arkansas could have intercepted. Remember, turnovers are going to be key in a game like this. This could be a difference of one possession. It's a very close contest. Just what Arkansas wanted, really. Different means to the same end. You're exactly right. Was that last second field goal by Ole Miss and allow the game to be tied at the half. Sailing's kickoff taken by Walton inside the five. And Jalen Walton now across the 25 with a block on the edge. Walton brings it all the way back out to the 40 yard line. Jalen Walton. 107 all-purpose yards a game. Give him 37 there for the senior from Memphis. So our first half stats, time of possession hugely in Arkansas's favor, but as the guys in New York talked about, as we've talked about the fact that it's Ole Miss outrushing Arkansas, big surprise. One very deep safety. Kelly eludes the pressure, scrambles across midfield. Kelly inside the 40. Arkansas gets the pressure, but yet again, they don't finish off on Chad Kelly. That was the problem with them in the first half, is that they were getting pressure affecting the quarterback, but they're not staying in their rush lanes. And once again, Chad Kelly makes them pay with his legs. 22-yard gain for Kelly. So heard Hugh Freeze tell Jenny right before the half, hey, you know what makes me happy? We get the football to start the second half. And now here the Rebels are driving. First and ten, Jalen Walton stood up maybe a couple. And it's Bijan Jackson, the sophomore defensive tackle, and Greenlaw there on the stop. Well, we want to take about the QB comparison today. Both of these quarterbacks have played at an extremely high level, and they've extended the plays, allowing the pass game to go. We saw Jack, Chad Kelly actually turn into a runner there, but Brandon Allen's been extending plays by buying time in the pocket. Play action, more pressure. Don't get the sack. Kelly completes inside the 25 now. The check down. Walton makes the grab. It's Ellison Dean there. Carter, that's at least the fourth sack opportunity that's been missed by Arkansas. You have to be able to get Chad Kelly on the ground, and the Razorbacks just can't. Only seven sacks on the year for Arkansas, none in this game. Complete to the outside for Demuria Stringfellow, shaking his way inside the 10 and into the end zone. Demuria Stringfellow. Ole Miss wastes no time taking the lead at the beginning of the third quarter. Really nice job by Ole Miss here. And Stringfellow making people miss in space. Poor tackling by Arkansas. Four or five tackles. You see safeties. You see cornerbacks trying to get the ball carrier to the ground. But Stringfellow brings it home early here to start the second half. Wonderlich's PAT. A celebration for DeMaurier Stringfellow and the Rebels. 
In less than two minutes, Ole Miss on top in the second half. Nathan Noble's kickoff taken by Cornelius at the goal line. Jared Cornelius popped as he reaches the 17, maybe gets to the 8 level. So here's Brandon Allen under center. Cody Walker on the right side. Big hole running behind Ragnow and Skipper. We saw Arkansas throw the football a lot on first down in the first half. The running game is about rhythm. You want those big offensive linemen to get a lather going. Be interesting to see the play calling here in the second half. If they want to get that run game going, they have to stay committed to it and then take the play action shots down the field like they did in the first half. That's a shocking number you saw there. Kelly with more rushing yards than Arkansas. Allen to Walker for the first down. Tackled by C.J. Johnson, the middle linebacker from Philadelphia, Mississippi. The defensive line from Ole Miss is slanting a lot. That means where they line up, once the play starts, they immediately move to an area in unison to create confusion against that offensive line, and it's really given Arkansas a unit that typically does a pretty good job of picking up that movement. It's given them a lot of trouble so far today. Arkansas in no rush. Here's play action. Throw on first down, complete again. Morgan makes the grab as Ole Miss continues to struggle with a play action passing from Arkansas. Brandon Allen's accuracy once he's outside the pocket on the boot and waggle and naked game, just like we saw there, has been outstanding today. They need to bring some edge pressure if you're Ole Miss and try and get him off of his mark, get him in his face, throw the timing off, because anytime he breaks the pocket, he's putting the ball on the money. Are you surprised that Kim Dietschy and the Rebels haven't been able to put more pressure on? Him? Well, they got some pressure early. They got a sack, but then they went away from it. The offensive line really buckled down and has given Brandon Allen some time to throw. And here is Allen with a quick hitter to the outside. Cody Walker out of the backfield. Brandon close to crossing Allen. midfield again. Mentioned earlier that every Arkansas drive, they have crossed the 50 against the Rebel D. Trey Elston makes the stop this time. A lot of times they're not getting pressure because of the play call selection for Arkansas, Carter. They're moving the release point, meaning getting Brandon Allen outside on the edge. So even if they can beat the offensive lineman, it makes it really hard for Ole Miss to get home with Brandon Allen on the run. Alex Collins back in the backfield for second and six. Collins will take it on second down. Stood up and dropped by John Youngblood, the junior from Trustville, Alabama, who's played well for the Rebels. Yeah, they're trying to establish their will at the point of attack. Remember, third down was something that we heard Hugh Freeze talk about needing to get his unit off the field. This is a third and very makeable four. Every play call that you have on your call sheet, if you're Arkansas's offensive coordinator, Dan Enos is there. Let's see what Arkansas dials up with. With the way that they've been getting upfield, look for a screen or a draw here. On third and three. Allen pumps over the middle to a dragging. Morgan for the first down. Sheds the tackler. Morgan gets it to the 31. Allen has time to throw, finds Morgan, and Hilton finally finishes it off. Drew Morgan is so good dragging across the field. You see him there on the left side. He's just going to get in front of the linebackers and pulls away that separation right there at the end, Carter. That was pretty good coverage, but a receiver's job is to create some space so his quarterback can put the ball in the money. And just like it's been all day, Brandon Allen hits him right in stride. Morgan has played a much bigger role for the Razorback offense after a myriad of injuries, including Hatcher and Hollister and Cornelius. He's become the go-to guy. Play action again on first and ten. Allen to the end zone again. Touchdown, Arkansas. Jared Cornelius hauls it in. 30 yards for Allen's third TD pass. And Arkansas responds again. One of the favorite plays that Arkansas likes to run is the weak side iso. You're going to see the safety bite up on the play action, which completely clears out the room for Jared Cornelius. They're thinking run there, but just a great stutter go 
Fakes like he's going to run the corner, comes back on the post with another perfectly thrown football. The pass game for Arkansas is on fire. Cole Headland for the PAT. Even again at 24. Headland takes a tumble, but it counts. Put another point on the board. Emrick there to help him out. Well, you get in the end zone and you point away from tying. It looks like Headland just slips. Doesn't matter if it's pretty or not. The PAT is good. And we've got a tie game again, even at 24. Brandon Allen, it's not a surprise anymore. Arkansas through the air. Touchdown. Even at 24 now, the touchdown pass from Allen. Now 52 touchdown passes in Brandon Allen's career. So he is now tied for fourth on the Arkansas Razorbacks all-time passing touchdown list. Walton's going to take a knee this time. His big return set up for the last touchdown. Stevens had four players drafted last year, so now the replacement's trying to run down. Walton and the Rebels, finally it's Santos Ramirez, a redshirt freshman who tracks him down. This is just gashing you at the line of scrimmage. Nobody there at home. There's some empty gaps there. Some poor angles again, and it's the run game of Ole Miss that's been impressive here today. It's been primarily on the legs of Brandon Allen, but Walton that time gashes the Razorbacks up the middle. Slant incomplete. Off the hands of Cody Core. You almost wonder if Cody Core heard some footsteps there. That's a couple wide open passes we've seen the Rebels receivers drop today. And again, soft coverage by Arkansas. I think Arkansas needs to buckle down and try and defend these guys a little bit more and jam them at the line of scrimmage. Look at that up top. Lots of space. Kelly's going to hand off to Akeem Judd, the junior from Durham, North Carolina, via Georgia Military College, brought down by Brooks Ellis. You know, I'd imagine at some point Ole Miss is going to try and hit their bubble screen game with that soft coverage out on the perimeter. They haven't really dialed that up. When you look at passes behind the line of scrimmage, quarterback Chad Kelly's has a touchdown on the year, but he's also got two interceptions. So even though they're short throws behind the line of scrimmage, you got to be careful with possession. Motion, flags down, free play, deep shot for Treadwell. Got it inside the 10. Takes the big blow and hangs on. Laquan Treadwell sets up Ole Miss for first and goal as Kelly takes advantage of the offsides by Arkansas. Offside, defense, penalty is applied. Results of the plays the first round. Well, one of the things that Chad Kelly's so good at is driving the ball downfield, perfectly located football. He completes over 50% of his passes that go longer than 21 yards. That big arm of his is deadly when he pushes the ball down the field. Redwell over 100 receiving yards again, five straight games. Kelly, design run, second rushing touchdown of the game for Chad Kelly. Back and forth we go to begin the third quarter between the Rebels and Razorbacks. Now it's Ole Miss on top again. Well, the pacing of the first half favored the Razorbacks. It was small ball where Arkansas was holding on to it. But here, Ole Miss is running the football. No backside pursuit. Just walks in for the easy touchdown. Once again, Chad Kelly's legs being the difference. Wonderlich's PAT. Would have thought the most effective running back in the game between Arkansas and Ole Miss would not be a running back. It would be the guy who hooks up with Laquan Treadwell to set it up. And then Kelly again into the end zone. Rebels lead it on the Razorbacks. LSU still undefeated in SEC play, but they take on the Rebels in two weeks. Ole Miss, if they win out, they win the West for the first time. Cornelius wrestled down at the 17. Two. Brandon Allen under center. 
Play action again on first down. Nice catch by the tight end Jeremy Sprinkle near another first down. That's the same play they've run on first down several times here. It's play action bootleg. He gets outside and you saw Ole Miss that time bring pressure off this top side edge, but it was from the wrong direction. They roll it into the boundary. Sprinkle with a nice one-handed catch picks up the first down. A very fast-paced game certainly benefits Ole Miss here. I think Arkansas needs to slow this thing down. They don't want to get to a shootout with a team that leads the conference in explosive plays. Well, the drive begin at their own 17. So if Arkansas can get a roll and they can run some time off the clock. Get back to their kind of pace. Allen's going to give it to Collins near the 34. Is Alex Collins closing in on a thousand rushing yards. Speaks there on the stop. Passing game's been there all day for Arkansas and Brandon Allen. But you like the ability to be able to pick up five yards on first down because your entire playbook is open. And with the type of team that Arkansas is, they're going to huddle and let it go tick, tick, tick. They want to slow this game down exactly like they did in the first half. But Ole Miss hasn't been letting them. Offensive coordinator Dan Enos. Second and five. Sprinkles in there at fullback. Play action again. Sprinkle again. First down again. Coming into this ball game, the combination of Jeremy Sprinkle and Hunter Henry was giving defensive coordinator Dave Womack some fits. He was concerned about how do we defend two guys that create mismatches. That time again, it was play action. They chopped down the defensive end, and there's a wide open tight end in the flat. The flats have been a very soft spot for this Land Shark defense today. Six straight completions for Brandon Allen. Collins on first and ten across the 45. Talked about Dave Wabak, 36 years as a collegiate head coach. Two stints at Arkansas. His second stint at Arkansas was in the early 2000s. And one of his coaches was Bobby Allen. Brandon and Austin's dad. Womack fondly remembers Brandon Allen and his younger brother Austin running around the practice field. Now they're the starting quarterback and backup quarterback for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Coming into this game, I thought it was going to be Arkansas's defense that was going to have to affect the quarterback. But Ole Miss has to find a way to try and get Brandon Allen off of his game. There he is again, play action, second and six. There's the pressure from Kim Dietschy, downfield complete anyway. Morgan hauls it in. Allen delivers, rolling away from the pressure. Carter, when you're talking about accuracy of a quarterback, it's not just about where to throw the football, it's when. He lets Morgan find the open space in that zone defense. He was patient. The throws weren't there. The coverage initially was pretty good, but because of Brandon Allen's patience, Drew Morgan was able to get himself open once again, and on the move, he delivered a beat. Five passes on this drive. Allen, there's the play fake again on first down. Incomplete this time. Well, Carter, we've been talking about it. This November is shaping up to be one of the most memorable we've had in quite some time. Got a good one going here to begin our doubleheader in the SEC West. LSU Alabama tonight. Trouble at the mesh point, but that doesn't matter. Collins in the open field inside the five. Elston finally brings him down. First and goal. Man, you had so many defenders trying to get themselves upfield. They just run a trap and split the defense, and that's what that play is designed to do. You pull backside linemen when you're a defense that's trying to get yourself upfield, which Ole Miss has been doing. That's a perfect play call, and the patience of Collins makes it pay off. Looks like Kimdichie had a chance and took the wrong guy in the backfield. Ball awareness is something that he struggled with. He's slow to react and fight pressure is what I've noticed about him on film. Walker and Collins both in the backfield. 11th play of the drive. First and goal. Walker takes it in. Arkansas responds again. Walker for Arkansas. Touchdown. 
Aaron, you talked about the need for Arkansas to go on a long drive and establish their pace, their tempo, their game. And that's exactly what the Razorbacks do. And that's exactly what they did. And this is their type of ball game. This is what you want to do. There's a little bit of movement there. Great job at the point of attack by the center and right guard there. We saw that Robert Kimdichi was in the backfield that last time. That time he got blocked on a combination block. Because he got out of his gap, the touchdown was right where he was supposed to be. Edlin PAT, and we are now tied at 31 with 2.14 to go in the third. Arkansas back to the ground game in the end zone, even at 31. Maybe premonition for Ole Miss, who has struggled with turnovers. Only five teams in the nation, more turnovers. Miss is yet to turn it over today. Walton brings it out to the 15. Pressure off the edge. Kelly complete on the screen. Give it right back to Markel Pack, the sophomore, playing a bigger role for the Rebels, part of that deep receiving core. The last four possessions, all scores for Ole Miss. The field goal was at the end of the half, so it wasn't that Arkansas got a stop. It was just the end of the half to tie it. That's Akeem Judd. Takes it to the point of Brooks Ellis there on the stop. Akeem Judd had a nice touchdown run, the only one they scored on the ground a week ago, making some people miss on the second level. And I'm telling you, Laramie Tunsil coming back on this offensive line has made them a lot better across the board. Judd pushed back on third and short. He got nothing there. Jamichael Winston in there to lead the charge. It's just going to be some penetration up front. Good push. And it was going to be the right guard there getting beat inside. You cannot allow penetration. And that's a huge stop right there by Arkansas. We talked about this being a possession game. That last play was a pretty simple one, but before this game's over. It could prove to be very important. We're all the way through the third quarter here, and this Arkansas offense has been heating up. Leeson rolls out, gets it away. The sophomore from Australia with another good rollout kick. Cornelius is going to bring it back to near the 29, nearing the end of the third quarter in a tie game. Waggle naked, or are they going to run? Stood up, but he gets a good push. CJ Johnson finally makes the stop. But Walker falls forward with Big Dan Skipper giving him a shove. That will likely be the last play of the third. In fact, the Razorbacks already holding up the four, headed to the fourth, even at 31. So at the end of the third quarter, tied up. 31 between Arkansas and Ole Miss will return to Oxford right after this message and a word from your local station. We were tied at the end of the first quarter. We were tied at the end of the second quarter. So, of course, at the end of the third, we are even 31 all between Arkansas and Ole Miss. It's a sellout crowd. It's November. Big implications for the SEC West title. Fun to be here for this one. Allen completes again. The red hot Brandon Allen completes to Hunter Henry. Allen from the shotgun on third and seven. Play clock winding down. Just get it off. Pressure. Allen escapes. There's a flag down as Allen rushes for the first down inside the 25. Robert Kimdichie. Holy number three defense. Since that was a one way, that 10 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. They're going to run some stunts up front and keep your eye on Robert Kimdichie. He's going to come in a great swim move over Sebastian Trotola. Trotola can sometimes get out over his toes and lunge. He's got a powerful punch. But again, Brandon Allen's legs are able to escape, extend the play, and pick up a huge first down. But the penalty certainly helped. 
So the ball spotted inside the 12. Only sacked once today. Might be the most pressure I've ever seen in the ball game with only one sack. Mm -hmm. Allen swings it outside. Mitchell blown up immediately by Mike Hilton, the senior who wears 38. Special number around here, honoring the legacy of Chucky Mullins. Just a really nice open field tackle with Tony Connor back in the game. Hilton told us yesterday that they were going to move him to cornerback. He's wearing that 38 jersey and making it proud. Said since his freshman year, it was a goal of his to earn it his senior year. Considers it an honor to put on that 38. Second down and nine. Morgan motions. There's the play action. Allen finds Morgan. Leaping, stretching, touchdown, Arkansas. Fourth touchdown pass of the day for Brandon Allen. And the Ole Miss defense is getting sick of seeing play action, waggle, Allen complete. This time it's Morgan who takes it in. That bootleg game has been deadly for Arkansas tonight. The basic fundamental of defense is you have to have somebody that contains the defense. You have to set the edges, and Ole Miss just hasn't done that tonight. And once again, Brandon Allen takes advantage of it. Headlands point after Arkansas grabs the lead 38 31 Brandon Allen 30th consecutive start the hometown guy grew up a Razorback and he is having one of his best days four TDs for Allen this one to Morgan boy it has been an action-packed <laughs> meeting between Arkansas and Ole Miss and there is still 12 20 to go in the fourth in a one touchdown game. We open tonight's show talking about the Ali Frazier match that would be later on tonight between Alabama and LSU. I'll tell you what, the road to the SEC West rolls through Oxford, and there's been some counterpunching getting thrown here today by both of these clubs. If the Rebels went out, including a win over LSU in two weeks, Ole Miss makes its first trip to Atlanta. Lane sailing, short kick, bounces, Walton still has it, trying to set up the blockers. Walton only gets back to the 17, so Arkansas and special teams trying to contain Jalen Walton, and they've done it pretty effectively. Junior from Buffalo, Chad Kelly, playing it to the outside complete. Out of Bojo on the screen with blockers. Razorbacks try and rip it out. Out of Bojo holds it strong. But there was some poor tackling as a result. We talked about them going to that quick screen game on the bubble screens. And once again, it's missed tackles allowed for all those yards after the catch. Two catches in the game for Out of Bojo, the junior from Cedar Hill, Texas. Free play. Kelly, another deep shot after an offside, and it's another big completion. This time it's hauled in by Cody Kaur. Kelly and the Rebels have taken advantage of those free plays. I'm telling you, usually quarterbacks are very accurate. Offside, defense, the penalty is applied, play results for the first time. And that's the second time in this game we've seen Arkansas jump off sides and Chad Kelly make some play. If you're on defense, you've got to continue to play. But Kelly, man, just putting the ball on the money when he pushes it down the field. His accuracy on the deep ball has been spot on tonight. All season, really. The last free play resulted in the big hitter to Treadwell set up a touchdown. This time it goes to Core for 37. Stay on sides. Eight play 20 plus. Kelly slant. There's Treadwell inside the 20. Laquan Treadwell, the junior from Illinois, leads Ole Miss into the red zone. Such a big body. He, he's almost like a tight end out there. He's so big and physical. Look at his arms, man. He's all cut up. We talked to him about his ankle. He said he doesn't quite trust it yet. Walton. It's maybe one. But I'm telling you, Laquan Treadwell has been a player that gruesome injury that he had a year ago against Auburn. Coming back, 
He certainly had a tremendous year. The production's there, but the yards after the catch just haven't been. And I think it's because, and he told us, it's been a couple times, man, I see that play in my head, and I'm worried about getting hurt again. He's got to be able to move past it. But it's a process, and it'll take some time. This is second down. Treadwell stretching. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Laquan Treadwell finishes it off. And Ole Miss is a PAT away from tying it again. Make it five straight for Treadwell. 100 plus yards and a touchdown grab. It's a beautifully run corner route. You can see those are touchdowns before they even happen. That big play offense of Ole Miss came to play and remember. Jumping off sides by Arkansas really helped that offensive drive stay alive. Wonderlick boots it through, and we are tied at 38 again. 10-30 to go in Oxford. LaCron Treadwell wants it more than you do. Touchdown, Ole Miss, even at 38. All oh, the famous shrimp and grits at City Grocery. How famous? Bob Ryan from the Boston Globe and his wife Elaine came down this weekend for a November weekend and uh, we joined him for dinner last night and it was a uh, memorable boy terrific that, that was fun Bob uh, Bob Ryan says we just like to take a trip somewhere fun so we've been hearing about the Grove and the Square and Oxford Mississippi so they came down to see it on a uh, cool November Saturday but the shrimp and grits though. oh yeah oh. legit oh. It's all legit. I went soft shell crab, and that was legit too. <laughs> Nathan Noble's kickoff will be a touchback for Arkansas. They'll take it at the 25. Water Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell. This is Brandon Allen to throw. It is incomplete, just short. Reed thought he had it, but it's ruled incomplete. That's a rare incompletion for Brandon Allen, who has been magnificent. Kelly's been outstanding as well. 26 of 34 tonight is outstanding. Brandon Allen has been locating the football extremely well, but so has Chad Kelly. Both of these guys have had the games of the century, at least for them this season anyway. It's just been remarkable, not only how well they've thrown the ball, but the way they've extended plays. A lot of big numbers. Maybe the biggest are the zeros at the bottom. Zero INT, zero turnovers. Cross the board. Allen, straight drop, screen, Collins. Gets across the 40 to set up another third down and manageable, as they say, for Arkansas. Sebastian Tertola really struggling with Robert Conditi. That was a matchup that I wanted to see. You have to go 1,001, 1,000 go. That's kind of the count on a typical halfback slow screen like that. But because Kandici got upfield, that caused some pressure. Look for pressure again from the Land Sharks. They've been getting close. Can they get home? Chad Kelly leading the cheers at a sold out, bought Hemingway Stadium. Allen on third and four. Stands and it's incomplete, intended for Hunter Henry. The Ole Miss defense gets a stop, a rare one. I almost felt like Brandon Allen felt some pressure, some phantom pressure from the backside. He was drifting as he releases the football. And the ball, once again, out on the outside. You see him drifting there. His feet aren't set. He comes up over the top. And a rare miss for number 10 tonight. Just wide for Hunter Henry. So for just the third time in this game, Toby Baker on to punt. Collins Moore back to receive it for Ole Miss. Great stop by Ole Miss that time. Moore, no fair catch. Has it at the 17. Maybe a yard for Collins Moore. So 727. Give it back to Ole Miss. A Chad Kelly leading Vaught Hemingway Stadium. Maybe inspiring the Ole Miss defense. They get a stop, get the football back in a tie game. It, it's been unbelievable. This is the number right here that is the most impressive of anything. When Ole Miss has struggled, it's because they haven't protected the football. 
but not only has good Chad Kelly showed up, so is good Brandon Allen. Does he have another drive in him? 21 turnovers this year by Ole Miss. None in this game. Kelly pulls it on first down. Jack Kelly running again. The dual threat explosion of Chad Kelly. He's done a really nice job of keeping this defense honest. They dial his legs up early on on first down, and he makes them pay. Just a nice block out on the outside edge. The end gets sucked up, and Kelly does the rest. Be interesting to see how Ole Miss plays this time-wise, clock management-wise. They continue to hurry up. Yeah, you saw they dialed up a run on that first down. Now they're checking at the line of scrimmage. My guess is they'll hurry to the line of scrimmage, but they'll try to bleed this clock a little bit. Kelly's going to give it inside. Wilkins, huge hole. Jordan Wilkins across the 40. For an Ole Miss first down. Gaines makes the stop. Carter, missed tackles have been a problem for Arkansas all game long. This is a counter OT, and they just gash it up the middle. They have people in position to be able to make plays, but they just simply can't get the ball carriers to the ground. Andre Oliver was right there, and he missed the tackle in the hole. Over 150 rushing yards in the game for Ole Miss. That bodes well under Hugh Freeze. Only two losses in his four years. And they've rushed for 150 plus. Play action. Kelly, why not? Little play action to the tight end. Hey. Ole Miss can do that too. Evan Ingram makes the grab. Carter, we talked about missed tackles. That's been a problem for Arkansas all game long. When they're rushing the passer, that's something that they wanted to do was to affect the quarterback. They got to him, but they couldn't get him down on the ground. Then when the ball went out on the perimeter, they were just letting people go. Demario Stringfellow being able to take advantage of it, and we just saw it there. Andre Tolliver in perfect position in the counter OT, misses a tackle in the hole for the big game. This is Wilkins on the carry. It's a block from Treadwell on the outside as Ole Miss goes over 500 yards of offense in the game. Now they average 520, but some of those against the UT Martins and Fresno States racking up big numbers. Yeah, and you mentioned the Quan Treadwell blocking on that outside edge. Watching film, and I watched quite a bit of it getting ready for this ball game. Receivers blocking on the perimeter was something that definitely stood out. Second and seven. Kelly. Dancing. Rolling. With a huge hole ahead. Blocking on the outside from Stringfellow. Helps Kelly get inside the 20 on the scramble. I would expect Ole Miss to hurry up here after a big game to keep these guys off balance. But you see the soft coverage there. There's just nobody at home. Everybody's so threatened by Arkansas. They're running deep, and that opened up the middle of the field. And once again, Chad Kelly's legs picks up a big, big, big first down for them. 98 rushing yards in the game for Chad Kelly. And a lot of those aren't on designed runs. They're on scrambles and improvisation. Into the red zone, Kelly screen complete. Out of Bojo, touchdown! Another Arkansas missed tackle allows Adam Bojo into the end zone, and Ole Miss is on top with 4:55 in regulation. Well, we talked about it again outside on the perimeter right there in the hole. You have to be able to get the ball carriers down, break down, square up, wrap and drive. And that time, once again, as you said, Carter, a missed tackle allows for a nice pickup and a touchdown, giving them the seven-point lead. Four minutes, 55 seconds left in Oxford. Kelly, the improbable running star of the day for Ole Miss. Setting up the TD. Adam Bojo into the end zone. Rebels lead it, 455. Good news for Ole Miss into the end zone. Touchdown, they lead it. Bad news, they only take two minutes, 17 seconds off the clock. So Brett Bielema and the Arkansas Razorbacks have four minutes and 55 seconds if they can put another drive together 
try and add some more drama late here at Vaughn Hemingway. Well, we just said the longest drive of the day for them was a little over five minutes, so that is plenty of time, especially with two timeouts. Now, remember, Arkansas won a quadruple overtime game against Auburn. They're going to have a lot of confidence about a close contested game down the stretch. That game is going to help them here on this drive with 455 left in the fourth. Now can Brandon Allen, the senior quarterback for the Razorbacks, lead an Arkansas response. Collins takes it on first down. Alex Collins bounces outside for an eight-yard gain. Second and two for Arkansas here with Jackson and Collins in the backfield. Collins straight ahead, huge hole. Collins across midfield, tripped up inside the Ole Miss 50. This is just a lead play, and what I've noticed is that Ole Miss is in cover three. They have three high safeties. Usually you want to be able to run against cover two because it's a numbers advantage. Against cover three, you have to keep taking what the defense gives you. Ole Miss lined up perfectly to allow themselves to be gashed on that last one. Under four minutes, Danny Nose and the Razorbacks looking for a game tying or potentially a game winning drive to break the SEC West chances for Ole Miss. Collins again on the right side. Alex Collins muscling his way for another first down. Kalo Moore makes the stop. No question who Arkansas is giving the football to in this critical situation. Had five touchdowns a week ago, and that time the play started out to the left, but his vision brought him back to the right-hand side. For this drive to be successful, Arkansas's offensive line has to be able to strain and sustain its blocks through the point of contact, and they did it beautifully, allowing for another first down. Arkansas driving, 3-10 to go. again stood up this time no gain may have lost a yard as Channing Ward the senior from Aberdeen Mississippi makes a stop to me it looked like the hole was a little bit to the outside from that time he just bounced it back inside it looked like he almost had his eyes closed nowhere to run once again Ole Miss's front on that defense doing their job and controlling the line of scrimmage Brandon Allen hasn't thrown the football much here. He may be forced to here on second down. Comes pressure. Picked up from the shotgun. Allen incomplete. Overshot the tight end Jeremy Sprinkle. Third and long for Arkansas. That was a great play by Brandon Allen. He threw the football away. There was some pressure. It got picked up, but nobody was open. So he gave himself and his team another chance. He didn't force the football. That's a win. In a game dominated by the offenses on both sides, the Ole Miss defense trying to get the critical stop with 218. Keep your eye on Hunter Henry right here on the end of the line of scrimmage. He's their third down favorite. Allen, time to throw, complete, inside the 20. It's Reed on the longest third down conversion of the day for Arkansas. On the snap of the football, Ole Miss starts to backpedal. Here's Reed. He finds the hole in that zone defense. Once again, cover three, and Brandon Allen puts the ball on the money. What a night number 10 is having. We talked about Hunter Henry being that favorite third down target. He did a good job being a decoy, which helped open up that pass to, for the big pickup. Back to the I formation. It's Cody Walker who is dropped in the backfield by Denzel Kimdichi, the senior outside linebacker. Arkansas is in the red zone with a minute 30 to go. Our red zone brought to you by Verizon. Both teams have been solid in the red zone, including Arkansas. Three for three touchdowns. 
Red zone was an area that Arkansas was able to take advantage of. Can they do it once again here? They need a touchdown with just over a minute to play, Carter. Play fake. Allen to the end zone. Touchdown with 54 seconds remaining. It's Dominic Reed who holds it in. 45-44. Allen and the Razorbacks deliver again. And the reason they did is because there was perfect protection up front. Brandon Allen, these guys trading body blows back and forth, back and forth. Each quarterback finding a way to will his team into the end zone with pinpoint precise passing. Arkansas going for the PAT to tie it. Headland with 53 seconds. The PAT is good. We're tied at 45. just like you wanted in November in the SEC. Got to look back at this one as uh, a day that went a long way in determining the SEC West champ, including Ole Miss's chances. Well, the first thing you got to do if you're Arkansas is cover this kick and prevent them from getting a big return like we saw Walton do earlier on in the game. Took them only 43 seconds to set up for that tying kick at the end of the first half. Walton after the bouncing kick from Sailor. Walton sets him up at the 30 with 47 seconds. Chad Kelly with an empty backfield. Delivers complete. There's another Arkansas missed tackle, allowing Pack to take it to the 47. 40 seconds showing. The clock stops as they move the chains. And that's their captain, Brooks Ellis, the leading tackler on this team. Usually a sure tackler, just goes up high. And misses. If Ole Miss needs 40. They get 17 there. Now the clock rolling. All ready for play. 30 seconds. Kelly delivers complete again across the 50. This time it's complete to Cody Core. Timeout Ole Miss. Still two left for Hugh Freeze with 25 seconds. Yeah, they're trying to play for the field goal right now. Maybe you take a shot. You've got a couple timeouts. You have to keep one in your back pocket in case you get tackled in bounds and want to kick that field goal. So look for them to work the edges. But again, high percentage passes. You can't put the football in harm's way, and you can't take a sack. Empty again for Kelly on second and six. Chad Kelly is sacked. Just take a timeout. With 22 seconds, the timeout called. It's Wise who drops Chad Kelly. Carter, they hadn't been able to get home all game long. Said the one thing that they couldn't do is be able to afford to take a sack. He almost jumps off sides. The snap's a little bit low, but just a good inside move. The right tackle there, Fawn Cooper, who was filling in for Laramie Tunsil, just opens up the inside. He stays square, but he oversets, opening up the entrance, and that's what allows for the sack. Third and long. Kelly scrambling away from the pressure. He's going to get out of bounds. 16 seconds, fourth down coming up. Ellis forces him out. But it's a fourth and medium. You have your entire playbook open out on the edge. Arkansas has been missing tackles. Do they go to the well one more time? Or can Chad Kelly use his legs to find a way to make a play? It's a fourth and six, but Ole Miss is about 20 yards away from the field goal opportunity for Wonderlick. About, because they want to give him a chance to win it. Whatever happens here better happen quickly with only 16 seconds left. One timeout left for the Rebels. Kelly, fourth and six, pressured again, escapes. Complete, incomplete. Off the hands, DJ Dean disrupts it. Adebojo had two hands on it. Ledbetter applies the pressure. 
And DJ Dean knocks it away to give the football back to Arkansas with nine seconds. DJ Dean has struggled tonight with tackles, giving up touchdowns, but he comes off of out of boy Joe there, or excuse me, off a of string fellow, and just dislodges the ball from out of boy Joe. Just a heads up play. When the Arkansas defense needed to find a way to get a stop, they got it. Now the question becomes if you're Arkansas, with a quarterback that's had a super hot hand tonight, can you find a way to come up with a miracle here at the end of this game? The Arkansas kicker, Cole Hedlund, had his career long 45 earlier today. He is just one for four from beyond 27 yards. Arkansas has had seven pass plays of 20 or more yards tonight. This is pretty run of the mill for Brandon Allen. They can get this in nine seconds and call a timeout and line up for a field goal. Allen, six seconds showing. Downfield, it is caught by Reed near the 30. Three seconds showing on the clock. Timeout granted. Cole Hedlund, the redshirt freshman from Argyle, Texas, who has never made a game-winning kick at any level junior high high school in his freshman season at arkansas his longest attempt prior to this game was 41 yards only one try in the last three weeks but it will come down to headland the freshman kicker with a chance to win it on the road for arkansas it will be a 47-yard field goal attempt for Headland. Prior to today, 41's as long as they'd even tried, but the 45-yarder earlier was easily good. Hugh Freeze does have one timeout left if he wants to ice the kicker, Headland. Trying for a game-winning kick for the first time in his football career. The 47 yarder from Headland is blocked. Loose football. We are headed to overtime. 45 all between Arkansas and Ole Miss. Laquan Treadwell stretching his 6 2 frame to get the block. Tied at the end of one, at the end of two, at the end of three, and of course. Tied at the end of the fourth quarter in Oxford. You see Laquan Treadwell lined up, just does a good job of timing it, gets that big hand on it. Even at 45, and when we come back, it's overtime in Oxford. Well, neither of these teams are very good in this red zone area. Arkansas only scoring touchdowns 58% of the time. They're ninth in the conference. Well, Ole Miss is 10th in the conference, only scoring touchdowns about 54% of the time. We talked about this at the top of the show, the role of the tight ends between Evan Ingram, Jeremy Sprinkle, and Hunter Henry. Expect those guys to show up and make plays here from the 25-yard line in. Said whoever had the football last was... Uh likely going to win this football game. It was nearly Arkansas with a field goal. We'll have another chance. Jalen Walton, huge hole on the left side. Walton on the first play of OT takes it to the 11. Well, the team that we expected to come here and throw the football all over the field has, but they've also done a better job at times of running the football. First down runs for Ole Miss have been huge. And that last one was a beauty. Arkansas already has an extended overtime win over Auburn in four OTs. And Kelly. Got a handoff to Walton again. First two touches of overtime go to Jalen Walton. Brooks Ellis makes the stop. Down here, down inside the 10 yard line, you have to watch Chad Kelly's legs. He's been hurting Arkansas all night. Arkansas has to keep somebody home to watch number 10. Has two rushing touchdowns. Kelly is going to scramble again. Kelly into the end zone. Touchdown. The third rushing touchdown of the game for Chad Kelly. Just as you call it, Aaron Taylor. Chad Kelly's 
sells this pass hard. It's a bootleg. He fakes the run. He comes out. He wants to throw it, but that little delay there keeps Arkansas's defense frozen. They didn't keep somebody home to account for him, and once again, Chad Kelly hurts the Razorbacks on the ground. Wanderlick puts the PAT through, so Ole Miss gets the football first into the end zone, seven-point lead. But it has happened throughout this wild one. A score and a response. Arkansas will have a chance in the bottom of the first overtime. Now it's Brandon Allen's turn. They fake the zone read. He rolls out. Breaks contain. There's nobody home and he walks in. That's a no brainer. You take what the defense gives you and you run where they're not. And Chad Kelly's done a masterful job of that tonight. Now it's Arkansas's chance to return. Dominique Reed's been huge tonight. Drew Morgan on crossing routes across the middle of the field's been huge. But also keep your eye on those two big tight ends lined up right here. If the Rebel defense gets the game's first takeaway, Ole Miss wins it. Now both tight ends shift. Look how Ole Miss responds. Play action again. Allen downfield, knocked away, incomplete. Can Darius Webster, the sophomore corner, knocks it away. Robert Kimdichie bringing the pressure. That ball was forced by Brandon Allen. He hasn't done much of this tonight, but Jared Cornelius was extremely well covered. Brandon Allen tried to throw that football, but once again, the location was off. It was low and at the feet of Cornelius into tight coverage. Great first down stop that time by the Land Sharks, and this crowd is feeling it. Allen on second and 15. Loose football. Allen falls on it at the 40. It's Marquise Haynes who strips it away and nearly ends it. Allen back on top to give Arkansas another chance. Marquise Haynes, the leading sacker on this team, beats the right tackle. Dan Skipper around the horn, just beats him with speed, and Brandon Allen is lucky to fall back on that football. What's your third and 25 play, Carter? How about play action throw to the tight end? <laughs> First down markers all the way up with a 15. Allen from the gun. Incomplete. It will be fourth and 25. One last chance for the Razorbacks. Hampton nearly picks it. If you're Arkansas, you got to go back to what's been working for you tonight. Dominique Reed's had a huge night. He's a tall, lean, wide receiver with big playability. We've seen him do his thing. He's six foot three. Throw the football up and let one of your taller receivers go high point that football. You got a couple tall tight ends to do the same, but it all starts up front with pass protection. Last chance for Brandon Allen of the Razorbacks. Fourth and 25. It's complete to Henry. Ole Miss knocks it away. Incomplete. No correction. It's on lateral. Arkansas keeps it going. Collins is going to take it inside the 15, and he has the first down on the lateral. Henry makes the catch, tosses it back. Collins is down. There's a couple Razorbacks down. They're down, Carter, but I don't know if they're out. It's hard to see who hits that football first there. Well, the replay booth is going to take a look at this. So Al Ford in the replay booth wants to take a look at the play. We'll find out as quickly as possible as to what exactly they're taking a look at.
It's at the end of the play to see if the ball came loose from Collins, who it was recovered by, and critically, where it was recovered. So if the ball comes loose from Collins, right here, if it's a fumble, recovered by Arkansas. But this is the end of the play that the replay booth wants to look at. Looked like Reed was right there. He threw it back and he lateraled it back like it would be in regulation. Collins, because he saw Hunter Henry lateral the football, I think, felt like this was the last play of the game, even though it was overtime, and tried to lateral it. There was a fumble on the play, recovered by Arkansas at the 11-yard line. It is their ball, first down. Wow. So Henry makes the lateral to keep the play going. Then Collins, after he had picked up the first down, nearly puts that football into Ole Miss's hands. And it's situational awareness in a big game. Those things happen with young players. That's what was so amazing about Hunter Henry keeping his wits about him and keeping that play alive because of what we just saw from Alex Collins. So this is a time where you'd love to be able to exert your will at the line of scrimmage. But Arkansas just hasn't been able to do that tonight. Collins and Walker in the backfield behind Allen. Bottom of the first overtime. Allen's going to give it to Walker on the left side. And gets it inside the 10 by Channing Ward. Walker's the type of runner that's north and south. He can't move laterally very well. That's something that an Alex Collins can do. That was just a fullback dive. He picks up a couple. With second and seven. Walker checks out. Collins in. Sprinkle back in there as well. As is Morgan, now in motion. Man coverage down below that side of the field is wide open. On second down, Allen to the end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas. And the improbable touchdown in the bottom of the first overtime. A PAT away from tying it again. It was fourth and 25 from the 40. They convert on a wild play, and now the touchdown. Drew Morgan going in motion, told him a couple things that it was man coverage, but it also bought him some space to run a route right back to the area that he vacated. Brandon Allen put the ball on the money. Arkansas is going for two in the win. <laughs> Four overtimes. They're going for it. They want to end this sucker. Allen has thrown six touchdowns in this game. Two-point conversion for the win for Arkansas. Play action. Allen pumps. Allen is dropped. Flag down. Haynes finishes it off. We check the flag to see if it's an Ole Miss win. This could be a face mask, Carter. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Have to reach into the goal. We're going to try. Wow. Arkansas is living right. We saw the lateral from Henry earlier. Then Ole Miss D's it up perfectly, but Marquise Haynes right there with his left hand keeps this drive alive. You're now halfway more close to the end zone than you were on the play before. So no question for Brett Bielema in Arkansas. They're going for two again. Ole Miss was in perfect position on that last play. This would be the situation you think Arkansas would rely on its offensive line. It comes down to this. No waiting around for that third overtime where you have to go for two. The second two-point try for Arkansas. Collins next to Allen. Morgan, fake it, Allen takes it, dives, and he is in the two-point conversion. Arkansas wins it in overtime. And all 
Brett Bielema can do is smile. Escaping Oxford with a shootout overtime win. 53-52. Just a beautifully designed quarterback run. He gets hit and lets go of the football as he crosses the plane. Look at the determination. Reaching as the ball hits the ground, it comes off. You wonder if his teammates jumping on him is where the injury occurred. So for Aaron Taylor and Ginny Dell, I'm Carter Blackburn saying so long from Oxford, Mississippi, where the final score in overtime, Arkansas 53, Ole Miss 52.